Hello everybody, it is Ebontis here, and I want to talk to you guys about the events of yesterday, but also I'm going to give you a little bit of a warning to tune out if you want to solve these things yourself. So yesterday, we got our final card at the lectern, and what that did is open up one more level of the Embaru engine. There is a puzzle in the Embaru engine, and if you go in there and solve that puzzle, which is a legit puzzle by the way, I do have a solution yesterday in one, how to get the card, where it's located, the steps you have to do before you even get to the puzzle section of the Embaru engine, and then finally, how to solve it. Now, in that video, I don't show you the solution because I was trying to be a little light on spoilers. That is also why the thumbnail of this video says Season 23 Revealed, not Season blank 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 with the thumbnail. It's trying to be nice if you guys want to figure out and see some of this stuff yourself. If some of you comment down below and say, I don't care about, you know, redacted this or keeping things, if some information's out there, share it with us. Let me know in the comments below if you appreciate me trying to keep things spoiler free. If you're just like, hey, if it's out there, tell the world. Let me know. I am curious because, you know, I could totally reveal everything faster yesterday, but I chose not to just for your guys' sake. Now, this will be my last warning. If you want to go solve the puzzle, now is your time to step away. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens once you solve the puzzle. And both the voiceover, what you see, the... Uh, and anything that happens after that with a little bit more information. I just want to show you guys all that in one place in case you don't jump in and want to solve it, but you can see everything that happens. So, here's where we're going to step away that break. Final spoiler warning is here, and here we go. This... This is an Ahamkara egg. Uncorrupted by taken energy of Riven's clutch? Impossible. We drove the Wish Dragons to extinction during the Great Hunt. Riven's eggs were destroyed, or so we thought. Guardian, you must leave the Spire at once. Ahamkara are powerful beings. Even a newly hatched whim is dangerous. Wait, Savathun left it here for us to find. Why? So that it may wreak havoc. We have to take it back to the Athenaeum. What? It can't stay here. Not with Savathun. There's no other course of action. And if it hatches, what then? Like you said, the kind of havoc only an Ahamkara whim could wreak. Initiate the Transmat Guardian. We'll make sure it's contained. This is reckless. I've decided to follow your example. <sighs> Guardian, do as Ikora says. I know who to speak to about this discovery. Guardian. What have you been working on in here? A pattern in Savathun's wings. She did give us what she promised. The last wish. Ophiuchus, I need you to pull some logs from the Cryptarchy archives. It's been a while since we dealt with an Ahamkara. The hidden will need to be briefed. Bring up any thesis papers on how the Ahamkara grant wishes. Include all hypotheses on why they seemingly misinterpret people's intentions. Our best minds have been working on this for centuries, so there should be plenty. Next, pull all the hidden reports on the Wall of Wishes. I know it makes bargaining with Wish Dragons less likely to backfire, but we'll need to know exactly how the Techians designed it. And speaking of the Dreaming City, set aside all the after-action reports from the Keep of Voices, and highlight anything to do with the lost final wish. If the path into the portal really depends on a Wish Dragon, knowledge will be our most potent weapon. They're powerful in ways that we don't understand. And I'm sure they have some hard feelings after the Great Hunt. We'll need to tread carefully. 
Ahamkara don't give second chances. So if humanity's survival rests on a wish, it'll have to be impeccable. All right, so the first thing that you guys saw was when you solve the Embargoogen puzzle, you walk through the door, and in the back of it, you will have seen the egg of an Ahamkara that is uncorrupted. Now, what does it mean that it's uncorrupted? Riven was taken. That's why we kind of had to kill her. There wasn't much of a choice. But this is an uncorrupted, aka just a normal Ahamkara, and for a species that is thought to be extinct, this is the last one. They are wish dragons. Now, also we heard from Ikora talking to, like, trying to get the hidden ready, trying to understand how the awaken, how the wish wall were awoken, sorry, uh, and how the wish wall works because wishes often get misinterpreted by the Ahamkara, whether it's intentional or not. So they have the wish wall that does specific things. We want to understand that. Go into history. The goal here, and it seems like, and I'll put it on screen now because next season is called Season of the Wish. And what that is talking about is Wish 15. So if we come up here to the Dreaming City, you can go into the Last Wish Raid, you can go to the Wish Wall, and there are 14 different wishes you can put in there. There's never been a 15th, even though it has been rumored and speculated and everything like that. Five-ish years later, from the release of this, we are going to potentially be wishing... Or, understanding or knowing how to get to the 15th wish and i'm guessing somehow that 15th wish ties into us getting into the final shape how we get into the portal that kind of thing who knows the details but that feels like what's going to be happening so we're going to have an ahamkara age the egg that we have to hatch we're going to have a whim of an ahamkara so a small dragon and we're going to have to wrangle with that and hopefully get a get enough information to be able to work with the Ahamkara, and then somehow also get the wish to accomplish what we're trying to get without the wish sending us, you know, anywhere we don't want to be or do the wrong thing or whatever. So that's what it sounds like the season's going to be about. So we're probably going to be back on the Dreaming City, working with Marasov, Petrovinge, maybe Crows involved. Those are the three people I would imagine involved, but we'll have to see. Uh, but those are all of our Awoken. We're, my questions lie. One, where's the dungeon going to be located? Because we literally already have the Shattered Throne here. So are they going to go plop that in a different destination? But we do get a dungeon next season. Are we ever going to break the three-week cycle of the Dreaming City? Because when Forsaken came out, and then the raid was beaten, and then there's a dungeon, we go into we go through three weeks of the Dreaming City rotation, and then when you beat the dungeon, then you beat um, Dolan Karu, if I'm rem remembering the name correctly. That starts this cycle over. You've got the... And this has been the battery that was of cunning and deceive, deception that was feeding Savathun's worm for a very long time. Our, since she has no worm and no need for it, are we finally going to release the Awoken? That would be kind of cool. So that's another thing that's going to happen. So I'm wondering what is going to be, you know, when season 23 is done, we go to the final shape. Is the Dreaming City still going to be there? It's a gorgeous destination. And hopefully they don't get rid of it. But it does seem to have very big ties into next season. Obviously, Season of the Wish with the Wish Dragon tying into the 15th Wish and somehow getting us into the final shape, into the Traveler, in through that portal that we can't go into to face the witness. So that feels like everything that is going to be happening next season. And that sounds kind of cool to me, honestly. Now, there's also going to be a seven-month break between the start of season 23 and not a seven-month break, but a seven-month season, potentially. Seven months, six months, however you want to think about it. It's probably going to be at least six and a half months. There's that three-month gap. I would temper your expectations now because last time for the 30th anniversary, I've been told this thing was developed in about eight months. So we got a dungeon. We got Dares of Eternity with its different rotations and Zur and his treasure hold. Do not expect anything on that level. I've heard there will be a small thing in this like seasonal break, kind of maybe three months in. So if we get, you know, November 28th and maybe when the season was supposed to end in late February, maybe we get something small. What I would guess it would be is literally one seasonal activity. Salvage, you know, your deep dives, those kind of things are a little bit more in depth because it's a tile set. What I would guess, and this is where I would keep your expectations low, and then if they surprise us, cool. Do not expect them to bring campaigns out of the vault or bring it back a reprised raid or make a new dungeon or anything along those lines. They need to focus on the final shape, and I'm pretty sure they need all the people working on that as possible. So what I would guess is going to happen is you take a destination that already exists, something like Europa, and you make a seasonal style activity, something like Expeditions, but hopefully better, 
a little bit of loot's involved, a little bit of, I don't know if you do a side story in there, if you even do a story. Some small activity is just kind of a little baby injection of something to do for a little while. I don't know how much they can really pull out, so keeping my expectations that low probably is the safer bet. That's just me. If you shoot for the fences and you get let down, that's your fault because I'm telling you now, think small, and if you get anything even more than what I said, that'll be a nice little surprise. So next season, it's going to be Season of the Wish, Dreaming City, Awoken are definitely involved, Ahamkara Wish Dragon, figuring out the fame, the infamous 15th Wish, finding our way into the portal as we lead into Final Shape, and somewhere in Season 23, we're probably going to get a little tiny content injection, we're going to get a new dungeon, which will be cool, and then we're also going to supposedly get in-game LFG, which uh, from reading Tassie's article also, it sounds like that has technically been very difficult to put together. So it may come in very bumpy. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work. It'll be nice to have it. But if it's rough, then maybe that extended season will help them iron out some of those edges. So that is everything I got for you guys today. Tomorrow, I'll put a little video together just to remind you of prepping for season 23. If there's anything you want to do podcast is tomorrow night today i'm going to be over on above so it's above uh it's above tp i think that's his twitter name but it's above we've had him on the podcast before he's doing kind of a community summit just led by the community so i'm going to be over there on his twitch channel today about 2 p.m central but go watch all of his um streams he's got over these last couple of days he's just getting a lot of community people together getting thoughts and feedback and kind of talking through some of the issues because last week sucked and it still sucks that we lost the people we did that the studio has lost it a lot of community trust and they have a lot of work to do. And a lot of the issues we've thought of potentially have been presented to upper management with, you know, maybe falling on deaf ears. There's a lot we don't know, but it does sound like, you know, it's, it's been a rough time and it's going to be a bumpy road ahead, but I'm still curious to see final shape. So last we sucked and we're not diminishing that because people losing their jobs is terrible um, but again, I can also, you know, want to see what the employees that still work at Bungie have created because they're passionate about the seasons and still think it sucks that the employees that let go lost their jobs and the way it all happened and everything like that. Both are true. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, come hang out over on Twitch when I'm hanging out with above this afternoon, 2 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Pacific. Uh, other than that, thank you guys. Enjoy the, the video. If you're new to the channel and you like this and any other content I do, hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. Nice ways to help support the channel for free. Have a good one, everybody. And if you have thoughts about any of this, leave in the comments below. Have a good one.